first of all what is chemical bonding very straightforward uh, question here right we know that we have elements you know for example i have we know that we have carbon we have hydrogen we have lithium we have sodium but we also know that these elements do not exist as you know atoms they actually exist in a different form right i i will never have pure carbon in nature i will never have pure lithium in nature they will always exist with something else carbon can exist as co2 as co as sugar right right uh, sodium exists as nacl or uh, naoh or na2co3 right so basically all of these elements that we studied about earlier all of these elements they do not exist as elements they exist along with other elements right and this right here is the root cause of our problems this leads to a lot of questions question number 1 why are they uh, you know why are they together reason number you know that is the first question that comes to our mind why can't carbon exist alone why is carbon with oxygen or with hydrogen or with something else right how does an atom decide as to which uh, which other atom it has to bind with what exactly is this bonding process how does it occur right so all of these questions start coming to our mind and the answer of all of these questions is what we call chemistry right anyway so uh, over here you have studied a little bit majority of you are in 12 some of you are in 11 so in 9th and 10th itself you have studied the basic concepts over here that uh, the a singular atom of an element is not exactly chemically stable right uh it has a tendency to bond with some other uh, uh, you know atom of an element so that the overall product is stable right so carbon in general one atom of carbon in general can exist absolutely but if there is an oxygen nearby it will have a very high uh, you know tendency to bind with it if there is an oxygen nearby the only way to keep carbon as carbon alone is if i do not have anything around it you know an inert atmosphere right so uh, basically this is this is the most simplest of uh, uh, you know all the uh, answers that we have that every atom in general has a uh, is not chemically stable and therefore has a tendency to bind with the other atom this bonding as we call it this bonding depends on the overall stability of the product right if the product is more stable the bonding will occur in greater amount if the product is less stable the bonding will occur in lesser amount right also if the uh, you know the product is not stable at all the bonding will not occur at all right for example c2 uh, you know doesn't really exist right on the other hand ch4 does exist co2 does exist and so on and so forth right everyone so uh, these are few questions which have been answered over time and there were uh, there are a few uh, concepts that we study over here for example we start with the octet rule right which basically first of all uh, uh, you know tells you that every atom is supposed to have eight electrons around it if it doesn't have eight electrons it will combine with some other uh, uh, you know atom to form eight electrons and that works out very well for us right if i have nacl yes na has only uh, uh you know one electron in, in its outermost shell cl has seven in its outermost shell right none of them have eight but together they can have eight so either uh, uh, you know one electron from na can go here so i will have an na plus and a cl minus and then they get together because of the electronic force or na and cl can share one electron and they get together by mutual you know sharing so these are two types of bonds that we uh, uh, you know come up with this is the ionic and this is the covalent we know that in nacl actually ionic bond exists covalent actually doesn't exist but covalent exists in other forms for example in h2o right so th these are the basic concepts that we are already aware of octet rule has its limitations for example there are several uh, atoms which do not have you know which form a bond even though they do they do not have eight electrons right their outermost octet after forming the bond is 18 or more than that right for example uh, you know transition elements and so on and so forth so there are several limitations over here and so far we have reached 
uh, you know, molecular orbital theory and valence bond theory, right, in general. So that is where your syllabus ends. Your syllabus for individual bonding ends at, uh, uh, you know, valence bond theory, which includes hybridization. And for molecules, you have molecular orbital theory, which is the most advanced concept that we have. This is what we have discussed. No bond is 100% ionic in nature. There is always, always some covalent character associated to it. 